My name is Catherine Michael. I also go by Katie. I work for a web development, development agency called Eldarian. I'm a release manager for an open source library called Pinex. I'm a DEFNA board member and DjangoCon US website chair or co-chair, depending on the year. Uh, hi, my name is Katia Lira. I'm from Mexico City. Uh, I'm a full stack uh, developer with Python at a Canadian company called LocalLogic. Uh, I'm also a board member. Uh, I'm vice president of DEFNA. Um, I work on the communi communications team at DjangoCon US. And that's it. <laughs> so uh, let's start with like, if you have any recommendations on how to manage like presence, social presence for a, a conference. I think that it kind of helps to understand how DEFNA and DjangoCon US organizers work together. Um, since I'm the DjangoCon US website chair, my perspective is from the point of managing the website process. Um, for DEFNA, um, you know, I got involved with the website because it was of interest to me. We manage the high level contracts for DjangoCon US. So a few years ago, I created a CFP where we outlined the requirements for the website. And I kind of based that on the websites from the past, but that's really important um, because it made it very clear what we needed from a design agency. So um, the way that it works is that around the beginning of the year, we launch a landing page. And then during the first quarter of the year, Jeff Triplett, who is the president of DEFNA, he and I meet with the design agency and we choose a design and we kind of iterate on that. Um, fortunately, sometimes other people get involved and give their feedback, which is great. And eventually the landing page becomes the full-fledged site. Um, we have a Slack organization where we have a DEFNA channel and a website channel and a communications team that works on blog posts and works on um, tweets and Facebook posts. And we're active in that Slack organization throughout the year. And I think that makes it run really smoothly because everyone kind of knows what their role is and we kind of know what the specific requirements are and we have a time frame too. And so that helps move things along really well in my opinion. Uh, as for um, the social presence uh, outside of uh, websites, I would say that the biggest difference for DEFNA and DjangoCon US is that we have a lot of content for conferences, meaning speakers, uh, the call for proposals. Every step of the way can be a blog post or or a tweet. Something something is there. And for, when you're managing a, a nonprofit foundation or organization, you have to think about the content that you're going to put out. Uh, what we're trying to do at DEFNA is, is translating our knowledge for how to run a conference into content that other conferences or other organizations can can have. So uh, I would say that's, that's the biggest difference because you have to work harder to, to get the content. Do you see, is, is there any, any specific media more... Um more traffic from uh, or Twitter or Facebook or like uh, uh, Slack? Uh, it depends on, on the process. For example, when the call for proposals is about to close, there's a lot of interaction on Twitter. Uh, when the actual company the conference is, is happening, uh, that, that happens the same. Um, but for Slack, what I've seen is that all year round it's active, uh, a few messages a day or a week. So that that's also, a downside of that, I would say, is that we all we have to be aware of those messages and, and keep an eye on that because of code of conduct instances that could happen. Um, but yeah, the, the, the Slack is alive all year. What do you what do you think are like the the the, the first steps always for a conference to kind of 
start or or uh, launch the website of, of a conference? I mean, what are like the first things that we always look at in the beginning of, of a new year and all that? Well, I, we're really lucky because um, we the the process we have in place we the people who are involved we always have enough people with experience that um, we already know a lot of the important things and so for the website in general it's really important um, that it be responsive of course so that it works on a lot of devices it's really important that it be accessible because we want everyone to have a great user experience and for me personally it's also really important to have a link available to our code of conduct all the time so that people know that it's a welcoming safe space when we launch the landing page um, it's at kind of the very beginning and so we there's not much there it's kind of the bare minimum but um, the important information is that we want to have um, the date and the location we want to have some kind of marketing blurb to get people excited about it. And we want to have a link to sponsor information because we're going to want to try to get sponsors involved as quickly as we can. And then um, as the design, the full design kind of comes together um, and we replace the, the landing page with the actual design, we're going to be updating it over time. Um, so that we'll have like a ticket link, hotel or accommodation information. Then we're going to have like a uh, call for proposal information and link and opportunity grant information and link, um, speaker information. Um, a thing that, oh, also of course sponsor information. A thing that I think is really cool about DjangoCon US is that we care so much about diversity and inclusion. Um, it's a priority to have accessibility information on our site. And then of course, like the schedule eventually, um, and then fun stuff like things around the, the city that people might like to do that. You don't have to have that, but it's really cool to have that on there. Uh, yeah, when, one of the things that Katie mentioned is that we have a lot of people that have knowledge and help us out throughout the year. And additional to that, we also have a lot of new people coming in every year because it's so easy con to contribute with us because we have uh, good documentation and great people helping uh, newcomers. And what that does is that those people, those new people al always have like fresh eyes and have more ideas than, uh, than maybe us that we've been doing this for a few years. So it's evolving constantly because of that, that new people keep coming in every every single year. Yeah, that's one thing that, that's really good. And I think also also that, that has to do with how the website itself is hosted. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Like what, what, what are the services that we're using and the reason why we chose that? Sure. So um, Right before I became the DjangoCon US website chair, the site was made in Django and someone before me decided to switch to Jekyll. And basically the way that it works is that the code is hosted in a GitHub repo in our DjangoCon US website organization. The main code is in the master branch and it's actually staged and served through um, Netlify. And this gives us um, a major benefit because when somebody submits a pull request, Netlify automatically creates a static site off of the PR and people can see the change to the site um, before the PR is merged. In terms of using Jekyll, I know sometimes people think it's kind of weird if you have a conference about a programming language and you don't use it to make the site. But using Jekyll actually lowered the barrier of entry um, to get started contributing. So our number of contributors went up drastically because people are able often to go into um, you know, maybe fork the repo 
and go into the browser and make a small edit to contribute. And before it was a bit more complex than that. Um, so from year to year, we're, we're able to usually reuse the code, uh, maybe make some development enhancements, but primarily create a new design. And um, it is working really well right now. Uh, for the DevNet website, we used to have it hosted with Squarespace. Uh, it was a great solution for a while because of how easy it was to have a design but it became eventually a bit expensive for, for us. So we switched the same to Jekyll, but I think it's hosted on GitHub pages. And uh, it's very easy to publish uh, a blog post because it's mostly done in Markdown. So you don't really have to do anything with design. The contributions that you were talking about, Calgary, can you remember any any examples about like what are the different types of contributions that other like attendees have done or, or other people, or are we talking about mainly just like the, uh, the organizers? Um, it can be anyone. Um, when the actual design and development are being done, it's the design agency that is pushing most of the updates. But then we have people who are organizers who help um, fetch the talk tutorial information from um, whatever site is hosting the CFP so that we can generate um, the talk and tutorial pages on the site. Um, organizers and speakers may realize that they want to update their personal information or change their talk title and they're totally welcome to just come along and update it. I, a few years ago, created some um, contributing guidance and it was really important to me to make it uh, very straightforward to contribute so um, we can direct people to the contributing guidance we can mentor them and they're welcome to come along and make an update yeah so so what about the uh, the, the design from like uh, I mean I, I think if it's it's a good idea to kind of compare the everything that happens on, on the design on on Django Khan's uh, website and for instance, DevNet's website, and especially since we're going through the whole like redesign. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I think it's it's very interesting, mainly like the timeline on how all of this happens, like whenever there's like propositions and then, or I mean proposals, and then one of those is chosen and all that. Do you all think like it's taking more time to do the redesign in DevNet than the work that needs to do to, to be done every year for Django. Well, it it's actually kind of like I think built into our contract that there's a specific timeline, um, and we basically just adhere to it. Plus, people working on it have mostly been involved for several years now, so they kind of like know. They, they kind of just have an idea of how it goes. Um, and so it goes really smoothly because it's something that's done from year to year. Uh, yeah, for DevNet rebranding, I think it's taking uh, a bit more time because it's the first time that we do it. And uh, you have to take in consideration seven uh, points of view uh, and with DjangoCon US it's a process that's very well defined and it's also only Katie, Jeff and myself in that process so I think it, it's easier to move along that way. Yeah, it definitely, when I first was the website chair, uh, it was much slower and they actually tried, some other board members, I think, tried to recruit more people to join our meetings the next time to try to move along the decision making. And then this year it was like much, much faster and easier. Maybe for one thing, when you first do something, you want it to be like really, really good and you're just maybe agonizing over every detail and then you sort of relax and go okay now I, now we i have a sense of what we're doing and it you know you can um 
sit back a bit more and and worry less because you've already gone gone through it and um, proven maybe proven something to yourself I guess and, and also Johnny uh, I think she knows the conference and us well enough that she can uh, have great ideas from the very very beginning we worked on several times so that's also a good uh, like a uh key points there to to get somebody that 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 already or at least that's already worked with the other conferences right you might not have to have everyone the same but yeah it, i know it does help to have some of the same people yeah so and and what about the the content itself like there's there's a bunch of things i think like for instance on a, on a conference website uh that or a lot of the content just kind of starts building itself right like for instance all the details for the sponsors so that's like things a little bit more like legal specific and uh, and i don't know like the list of of people that are going to speak and the topics and all that so that's kind of like it creates by itself right but but there is a bunch of other content that you have to figure out if you want to put it there or not like for instance one i think it's like videos and um, pictures from the actual conference and another one it's uh like maybe the things that, that, that you were talking about, like uh, uh, interesting things to do at the city that the conference is going to happen, right? So can you can you talk a little bit more about like this type of content that it's good to have, but is not your like legal usual structure of a conference? Um, so we kind of been a little bit um spoiled the last couple of years because we had the the conference in the same location because we reused the site uh, we were able to reuse a lot of the content um, but what happens usually is that among the organ organizers there are people who are chairs or co-chairs or kind of have taken leadership of a certain area and i have been maybe when the site is ready to launch i go back to one of the the past sites and i look through the github to see what we did or didn't have there when we launched and i go in and i sort of update the new site um, based on that to make sure that we have what we should or shouldn't have in there but the people who kind of own a certain subject area um, they will come in and contribute the content related to their area. And I will just keep like checklists and go through and make sure that it's completed. So like the people who are in charge of like CFP stuff or sponsorship, things like this, they will make the decision about it. And that seems to work really well. Going back to being spoiled, I think we have a great team uh, that's uh, unfortunately going to be changing because for sponsors, we have Heather Luna. The, she was taking care of all that and she's stepping down for the next year. And that just, I think that just speaks about how we're, a, I think at this point, we're a very well oiled machine that can pract practically get the conference done by itself. With a lot of help from from the community, but but I think we all pitch in a little, and and it can be done very well. 